Well, good evening. I would like to call to order uh, the public hearing of the Newport News School Board for Tuesday, March 16th, 2021. On behalf of the members of the school board and the superintendent, I welcome each of you joining us. A quorum is present to transact the business of the school division. The COVID-19 pandemic has had an unprecedented effect on all of us. We are all adapting to this new way of conducting business and the school board is as well. Personal barriers are installed uh, between the members of the board and our staff and visitors are socially distanced in the auditorium in compliance with the governor's orders. During this evening's meeting, uh, some of our participants will join us in person and others will join us virtually. We will begin tonight's meeting with a pledge to the flag and I ask Mr. Moody, would you please do the honors? To the flag of the United States of America, and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, for liberty and justice for all. Thank you, Mr. Moody. All right. So at this time, we are going to open up our public hearing on the proposed fiscal year 2022 operating budget. Prior to hearing comments from the public, uh, we will get a short overview from the superintendent. Uh, Dr. Parker, would, if you would please. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, joining me this evening is Mrs. Mary Lou Rousseau, our assistant superintendent, uh, joining virtually. She will go over in, oh, a summary of the uh, proposed superintendent's uh, FY22 operating budget. Uh, we'll pause shortly for any questions, Mr. Chairman, before uh, opening up for public comments. Mrs. Rousseau. Thank you, Dr. Parker. Good evening, Mr. Brown, members of the board. Uh, I would like to pro provide you with a brief uh, overview as Mr. Brown has requested. So, uh, Michelle, if you could move to the first slide. Thank you. So, um, this is our revenue. We expect our state revenue to be $335.4 million for next year, an increase of $10.7 million over this year, 3.3%. Um, the increase, as you can see, is from the state, the $10.7 million. Um, we are asking that the city provide additional cash capital for us next year, and that would be included in their operating budget, so it's not shown here as part of our operating budget. Uh, for federal and other revenue, we expect those sources to remain flat for next year, so a 3.3% increase over this year's budget. Looking at the pie chart that follows, uh, it shows what, um, may, what share of our revenue is for each uh, revenue source. You can see that the state revenue is our largest source of revenue, as it always is, and it's um, just under 65%. You can see that the city is just short of 34%. And federal and other sources provide less than 2% of our total revenue for 2022. Looking at our budget priorities for next year, Journey 2025 provides a roadmap for our planning and our budget priorities align with Journey 2025 as, as shown here. Compensation is an important part of attracting and retaining the talent that we need to make sure that our students are successful. So that's something that we look at every year, both salary and benefits. Um, we have identified some additional positions that we believe will allow us to better serve our students. And we have some ongoing technology and infrastructure needs also included in next year's budget. Looking first at our compensation strategy for next year, uh, our budget includes a 3% salary increase for all employees. Uh, we, our uh, salary scales are adjusted by 1.5%. And our compression adjustments for teacher scales continue the work that we've been working on for the last six years, this will be our seventh year. And that results in teacher, teacher raises ranging from 3.7% to 6.7%, depending on where teachers are uh, in their uh, tenure with us. Uh, to address our uh, health insurance situation, uh, we have not had to increase our uh, health care for the past two years for the school board. Um, well, we have had to increase our school board share, but we have not include, increased employee premiums since 2016. You can see that we had a 10% increase in employee premiums in 2016. We reduced the family premium in 2017 because we were uh, really out of step with other school divisions. So we uh, fixed that in 2017. And then we did a three month premium holiday in the months of December 2017 through February of 18. Uh, and then we have not done an increase in employee premiums in 19, 20 or 21. We had planned to do an increase in 21, but when we were not able to do salary increases earlier in the year because of the state revenue situation, we pulled back on a premium increase. Uh, you can see the amount shown here 
uh, for what's proposed in the budget for premium increases is between 3 and 6 percent, depending on the plan and the level of coverage that employees choose. In terms of what that means for monthly costs for employees, it ranges from $1.64 a month increase to $33.12, again, depending on what level of coverage and what plan employees are in. About 80 percent of our uh, employees choose employee-only coverage, and those are the smallest amounts of uh, increase. Looking at the proposed staff additions that are included in next year's budget, um, these are those uh, 21 positions that are included. Uh, we are um, first we're adding five counselor positions that are funded by the state budget, and then uh, next year we also plan to include two new licensed clinical social workers and two psychologists to increase our mental health uh, services for students. This is a plan that we've been on for several years now, and this uh, plan will continue for another year or two until we get to the level of staffing that we believe we need. Uh, next, uh, we're adding a central office position to assist with creating partnerships with businesses across the city that can support our students with internships and mentoring opportunities. Uh, we currently have part-time college and career specialists in each high school, and we're proposing to make those uh, full-time positions, again, to help our students in that area. Uh, and then we have some administrative positions that are currently at five of our schools, at schools that need additional administrative support. Uh, and last on the list is an AP for Huntington as the next grade is added to Huntington at Harris. So those are the 21 new positions included in next year's budget. Looking at the non-personnel costs included in the budget, first, as I mentioned, technology. Our rapid move to one-to-one -one technology has resulted in lots of technology needs over the past uh, eight to nine months. We've met many of those needs with our CARES Act funding. We'll continue to do that as we have the opportunity. But next year's budget does include an additional million dollars for educational materials and some network infrastructure that is needed uh, to keep us um, serving our students well with technology. And then also uh, another area of a need is um, uh, funding for operations and maintenance. I mentioned that we are uh, requesting additional support from the city in cash capital. And we have asked them to support us in the area of HVAC and plumbing projects that previously, previously were included in earlier versions of our budget. Those uh, increases were 1.2 million. And we'll ask them to, to do that in addition to the uh, annual amount that usually give us in cash capital of $2 million for buses. Uh, then you can see listed other projects that are here, um, bathroom renovations. Uh, we have ongoing needs for paving throughout the school division to include tennis courts and other uh, play services. Then we have um, audio systems in our auditoriums, and as they fail, they need to be replaced. And then we uh, need to continue to replace our security cameras and our uh, public address and clock systems as, as they fail as well. So important to keep our learning environments, teaching environments in good shape for our students and staff. So looking at what that means in terms of um, what's covered in our budget, uh, this is next year's proposed budget by function. As always, instructional services is the largest part of our budget. You can see here that it's 73.3% for next year. Operations and maintenance includes plant services, custodial services, security, and warehouse services. I think the others are relatively um, self-explanatory. You can see a little less than 6% of our budget goes towards transportation. We do provide uh, more transportation services than some other school divisions do. We're proud that we do that to make sure that our students are able to get where they need to be. Uh, you can see that technology is a growing share of our budget, uh, just under 5% for next year. And I'll just tell you that that will continue to grow once the CARES Act money is, is um, no longer available to us. That will need to become an even larger share of our budget in future years. Looking at the next uh, pie chart, breaks our budget down into a different, uh, a different look for you, and that is uh, the percentage of our budget that is about people costs. So you can see that 60% of next year's budget is uh, related to salaries, $200.8 million, and then another $86 million worth of benefits, or 26% of next year's budget. That leaves 14%, the green slice of this pie, $48.6 million for all the other costs uh, that are non-personnel costs in next year's budget. And then looking at uh, what's, where we are in the budget process, um, we are nearing the end, fortunately, uh, for those of us that work on this <laughs> day in and day out. Um, we are at the public hearing and hope that we have comments from the public tonight about our budget. And next week, we'll ask the school board to approve a budget that we can then package and send to the city council 
uh, city staff by April the 1st as we're required to by state law. And then uh, the city council is required to appropriate our budget by May 15th and looking at their calendar, May 11th would be the date on their calendar when we expect that that would happen. So Mr. Brown, that uh, completes our short overview for you and um, I'll turn it back to you. All right, thank you, Mr. So. Uh, board members, do we have any questions at this time? All right, seeing uh, no questions at this time, thank you, uh, Dr. Parker, for that uh, overview. And the board will now move into its public hearing portion, and we consider this a time to hear from the public and to gather your comments in regard to, uh, in relation to the budget. Uh, Madam Clerk, are there any cards at this time? No, sir. All right. Are there any, any cards? Seeing no cards, then uh, that will conclude our public hearing for this evening. The board will reconvene again uh, next week on Tuesday, March the 23rd to take up the budget as uh, to adopt a budget and, and vote on this particular budget. So we will adjourn now and see you all next week.